on the topic investment banking. Thank you for joining us today for this insightful webinar. Before we start, let me give you a gist about what exactly is a masterclass. A masterclass is a specialty class preached by respected and renowned experts in a series of high quality video lessons in which objectives are achieved through practice accompanied by detailed instruction. Moving ahead, I would like to introduce our esteemed Vice President and our pillar of support, Dr. Jaspreet Sodi, to our very first masterclass. She has been a constant pillar of support and guidance for all of us. Thank you for joining us today, Madam. Furthermore, I would also like to welcome someone who is much cherished by HRIs, our very own Vice President for Degree College, Dr. Naveen Punjabi, sir. And I would also like to extend my welcome to the backbone of MCOM committee, Ms. Tarti. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Handing over to my head. I would request Dr. Jaspi Sodi to please introduce our guest. Uh, Mehak, you can go ahead with the introduction. Ma'am will surely do the welcome speech. Okay. Yeah. To start with a brief introduction of our guest, C.A. Abhijit Muta. He has bagged an All India Rank 14 at C.A. IPCC and an All India Rank 21 at C.A. Final. He pursued his article shift from KPMG in the statutory audit domain. After qualifying as a chartered accountant, he joined J.P. Morgan and Ch uh, J.P. Morgan Chase and Co. as an investment banking analyst. He has also founded his startup, Mentor Watch, that guides students to pave their path through various career opportunities. We would request everyone to send in their questions in the chat box and the speaker will take it up together at the end of the session. Handing over to uh, Mr. Abhijit, please start with the session. Hey, hi. Uh, I'll, uh, I mean, uh, thanks, thanks for a warm welcome. Um, I mean, today's topic is investment banking, and I wanted to like you know understand um, like uh, what 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 do you think is investment banking? Can like anyone can you know just raise your hand and like unmute themselves and tell what what is investment banking? Yeah, yeah, Pravesh, you can go ahead. Sir, investment banking act as a middleman between the company who want to raise the fund and the investor who want to invest their capital. Okay. Anyone more who want to give it a shot? Uh, since, since people are uh, not very well versed with investment, bank pool up all the money. So when they take the money, it's a huge amount and they invest it into the right funds. So people do not have to worry about it too much. I think. Okay, no, that's that's an asset management fund. That's that's different than investment banking. My bad. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, I also have Ansh here, who is uh, who is part of our mentorverse team. Uh, I would request Ansh to you know share his screen to you know, guide uh, with the PP two. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, can anyone confirm, please, uh, if the screen is visible? Yeah, it's visible. Yes, it yes is. sir. Thank you. Okay, awesome. So uh, let's let's you know let's start with the basics. You know what what is investment banking? You know, uh, Anj, if you can move on to the slides. Yeah. So we are going to cover uh, these all agendas in uh, in our master class. Uh, we'll start it. What is investment banking? Uh, you know, a lot of folks have a confusion between what is IB, what is PE, what is VC. How are they different? We'll we'll give you a gist of you know how how all these firms work. Um, also, there are a lot of different types of IB firms. We'll will uh, you know understand how each of the IB firms differentiate among themselves. Then how 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 growth how growth opportunities look like in investment banking firms then how to apply for these firms i mean i'm sure everyone is uh, looking forward for their placement rounds so 
like we'll discuss about how to apply and how to prepare for for investment banking interviews so this is this is like a brief agenda uh, let's let's move on to the first agenda understanding what is investment bank and you can go to the next slide yes so i mean it's in a in a very layman words you know like under, like if 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 i want to tell something to my 5 year old niece investment banking is a work of a broker like whenever you want to take a house what what do you do like so there are there are you know two types of two types of like, like the two types of brokers involved whenever uh, you are looking for a house let it be for rent let it be for you know purchase so two types of broker one is would would be from the buy side one will be from the sell side okay so what does a broker do broker is a middleman who will make two people meet so that they 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 can you know themselves run out a deal or you know come to a consensus and you know uh, get 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 the flat for a rent or you know to buy so basically investment banking is a middleman work so are the they are the inter intermediaries that help you know maybe companies or individuals or government to to manage their money by performing financial functions you know by um, th so the so the functions can be from you know raising capital you know we like you my you you see i mean nowadays the ipos are very you know very limited but you see that there are various ways of raising funds it can be from ipo it can be from fpo it can be at the at the market pricing it can be via loan or it can be via bonds so all these all these there is always a book runner which is a bank which can be like you know uh, they, they are generally named as lead left book runner so there are always book runners for all the ecm ecm deals which is equity capital markets dcm deals debt capital markets for all these you require an investment bank second is whenever whenever you want to purchase a company for example now like everyone knows okay so elon musk told that okay he wants to buy twitter right but now if you know that elon musk doesn't have that kind of fund at the moment when when he wants to buy it in liquid funds right so now if you if you have, if you would have read the press release you will understand okay morgan stanley is going to give some 30.3 billion of underwriting uh, jp morgan was going to give some 13 billion underwriting uh, for 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 its purchase so what what does an underwriting mean so so whenever like whenever a company announces or whenever an individual announces that they want to buy the a particular company right so the, what they do is they they go to an underwriter they say that okay maybe in 6 months we'll need so much funds and you give us an underwriting that you will you know allow you will raise those funds from us from for us and we that will help us to buy on the company right so now what they did they like elon musk went to morgan stanley said that okay i am going to buy twitter and i want like these these kind of funds how much can you give me so he said okay i'll give you 30 billion dollars there will so there there will be interest rate which can be you know maybe based on libor but libor is like not widely used anymore so, so any any uh, variable rate or any fixed rate that will be mutually decided and when when like in the later point of time when elon musk says okay i need it in the next like 2 3 months morgan stanley will go to the market raise that funds and give provide the funding to elon musk so that is what an underwriting means okay now like the third which is like the mostly known uh, function that an uh, investment banking uh, you know uh, firm does is m and a like all all m and a is basically you know um, all these deals which you see like you know in indian market you must have seen byju acquiring like a hell lot of companies and the the biggest deal which has happened in the recent times was uh, like in the north american market was in the cruise industry so so there are a lot of you know deals which happens where where there are mergers and acquisitions now in mergers and acquisitions there are also two kind of mergers and acquisitions one is sponsor based second is strategic so what do you mean by sponsor based so sponsors are generally folks who who are not into the related business but they are going to buy it to exit at a later point of time so exit can be via ipo it can be via sec, uh, like another sale to another strategic or p or, or another private equity firm so so what these guys do is for example now blackstone is a is one of the biggest pe what they do is they acquire a controlling stake in say another company they'll be in that company for say 5 to 8 years and after 5 to 8 years 
they'll exit it by you know maybe listing that company or send, selling it to someone else so that is a strategic that is a that is a sponsor sponsor m and a and in 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 the second case where you know uh, there are two companies who are who have who are into similar business who are going to acquire each other for synergy that is a strategic m and a uh the, the the fourth function here is restructuring of firms if you like for example one of the latest deals that we did was hdfc so hdfc bank and hdfc got merged like uh, i i think everyone knows that but why why would they do that right i mean why what are the what are the benefits out of that so like that is all we what we in, like you know uh and analyze what what can be the benefit if both of them are going to be as a one company and that is restructuring basically and that was one one of the deals which was like 140 billion dollars so it was a huge deal and we had to you know, it was a long process which took a good amount of time you know sebi approval um, you know nsc bsc because it, it was a listed company so there are a lot of things that come into picture when you do a restructuring of firms and then the, the the fifth function is financial advisory and valuation um i mean it's a, it's a it's one of the most critical function when it comes to an investment bank you know maybe like everyone knows that uh you require funds for your you know uh, day to day activities now um if you want to raise funds you will go to a investor and they'll like they'll be like okay we want these many funds at these what this this percentage at. so uh who who does this valuation we we investment bankers are the one who do that valuation right so they will go to the like when when the inve- when the promoter will go to the investor they'll be like okay i can sell my 20% at 100 crores but who is bringing that 20% at 100 crores we like investment bankers our valuation specialist are the people who do that so that's one of the important you know uh, function that investment bank provides and the last one is risk management like i am sure everyone knows what is risk management you know hedging risk risk can be of various types like you know one of the major risk that we are seeing these days is inflation and you know interest rate risk which which saw like a fall of 5% in one day at 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 NS, uh, at nasdaq so so that risk is you know something which is uh, very very you know very high and spoken throughout the street everywhere so this is this is one of the services or one of the function which we provide as an investment bank let's go to the next slide yep okay so i mean like uh, i i think every everything is clear as of now we can we can do a q and a session you know just just a thumbs up can be helpful if you are able to understand whatever i am saying so uh, it is easier for me to gauge it Okay, cool. I can see a few thumbs up. Okay, let's let's go to uh, you know what is IBP and VC. Can can anyone give it a shot? That okay, what what do you think private equity firm does? What do you think venture capital does? And what do you think uh, in like you know investment bank already we spoke. Do you do does anyone want to give it a shot? That uh, how how do we differentiate between these three? Hello, sir. Can you listen? Sorry. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dhananjay, yeah. please go. Yeah. So, private equity usually does that way. Uh, they buy a company which are not listed on the any exchanges, and venture capital is the firm that uh, invests the company which is newly formed. Uh, so that they can grow their money they are the main the main motive is to grow their money and investment banking is uh, uh the investment banking is helping uh, coming uh, for uh, means listing their companies in the nasdaq or in exchanges as far as i know means these differences understood understood okay awesome uh so so let's just understand what what exactly is the difference or what exactly a private equity firm does what exactly a venture capital firm does and how it differentiate or how how there is a common thing that okay ibp vc all of them are like a similar kind of you know arm of each other 
so so IB I already told what what they what 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 IB does. So let's let's understand PE. You know, so private equity, you know, basically are are funds. You know, are fund houses which provide which which invest into mature businesses. You know, they like the the main differentiator between private equity and venture capital is so private equity invest into mature businesses or businesses who have already you know like I'm sure everyone knows what is an LBO, right? So LBO is the most widely used term or most like more financing term when it comes to a private equity. They always do LBOs and like not always like most of the times they do LBOs. So how when does an LBO work? When you know that the the target has is into a mature business and they can you know repay their interest rate and debt on time. So. So private, like just to differentiate between private equity and venture capital. So everyone, know, like you know, venture capital is a leg, is a is a arm of a, uh, private equity, which only invest into startups or you know into growing businesses which are at a very early stage of life. So, so the the, the main differentiator between private private equity and venture capital is private equity invest into you know mature businesses which has a good you know good growth potential. And venture capital invest into they generally provide seed money, which is uh, you know uh, at the at the very start of the uh, start of the um, you know the life of the company. And uh, another difference between both of them is private equity generally try for a controlling stake, which is like more than fifty one percent or fifty one percent and above. But when it comes to venture capital, uh, it it generally does not get controlling stake because it is at a very early stage of life and. They just provide the seed money for the promoters to you know grow their business or multiply their business, and they do, they don't have the controlling stake and the C in the company per se. So that is the biggest difference between PE and VC. Um, I mean, some of the some of the very very uh, very common names in private equity domain is the Blackstone Group, the Clar the Clarlyle Group, the KKR, and and the likes. And in venture capital, I'm not sure if like a lot of people have heard about uh, these firms, but they are like they are they are one of the top performing venture capital firms uh, in India. Kalari, SL Matrix. So these are some of the some of the firms um, which which are doing really good in their in their particular domain. And and generally, what I have observed is venture capital generally uh, those folks who like in 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 the in this fintech era, they they generally look for a for for businesses which are you know having high growth potential. Tech driven, digitally, you know, digitally, you know, or like creative or something, and that is when they they uh, they actually invest into those businesses. Okay, we can go to the uh, third agenda point, which is you know different types of investment banking firms. Can can someone tell me um, what are the investment banking firms that cover that comes into bulge bracket? Or what? Like what? What do you think are the kind of firms that will come into bulge bracket? Anyone can you know just raise your hand via the Zoom feature and then can unmute themselves. Yeah, Pravesh. Sir, the bulge brackets are those who are the giants in their industries. Okay, can you name? Uh, sir, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, Morgan Stanley, Credit Suisse, UBS, Wells Fargo. Uh, and okay awesome awesome um cool let's let's just dive into you know what how how does a bulge bracket differentiate between rest of the firms or like what exactly are the type of different, different kind of firms so so um as you can see on your screen you know bulge bracket are, are 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 the largest and most profitable banks which provide full service investment banks except goldman sachs all all of the all of these uh, banks are also into retail banking. Also provide under underwriting. Also provide funding. Everything they do. Goldman Sachs is particularly focused into M and A, so they are not into uh, you know, other other services. It's not like a full service bank, but apart from that, every every bank which you can see on the slide provides all these services. So so like how how do they differentiate each other? Because they are the, like bulge bracket are present throughout the globe. They have they have offices in in every in every developing countries or developed countries, and um, they provide all the services under one roof. So, like, what are the kind of services here? Again, like the or the, the the what we spoke, asset management, M and A services, ECM deals, DCM deals. All of these are covered by bulge packet. 
and it's very it's it's it, it's elite that you know you you have an you are working at an bulge bracket or you are at some bulge bracket for industry it's it's very easy for you to switch within bulge bracket or you know exit to some some private equity or anything which is uh, looking for folks from bulge bracket um we can we can go to the next slide which talks about elite boutiques and big four um so so how 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 is an elite boutique and big four different from uh, uh bulge bracket is elite boutique and big four generally focuses only on investment banking advisory and m&a services they generally don't provide underwriting services or you know provide funding and all those kind of stuff um and if you see some of the some of like big four i'm sure everyone knows you know what is big four you know all all i it's a, it's a very surprising fact that a lot of people don't know but all the big four also have their investment banking like you know investment banking domain and investment banking it's like it's separate from what auditing and assurance services they provide and and to the surprise of everyone um in in the last year ey was was the top of the league table in india so they they pro, they did the most deals and like uh, in in terms of value in terms of a number both of them they did they did the most deals in india you know surpassing kotak icici access everyone so uh it's a, it's a, it's a very uh, i back when i was also doing my article chip i didn't knew that okay like kpmg also has an investment banking like so it's it's very surprising but uh the this like these these companies actually provide uh investment banking and and are very good at what they do uh, in in their investment banking domain as well so some of some of the you know elite boutiques are you know moilis and companies uh, one of the globally a uh, renowned elite boutique uh, moilis and company uh, some indian based boutiques are ambed uh, avendus uh, investec lazard A avendus would come into um, one of the top elite boutique in india and followed by ambed spark o3 investec evercore uh, lazard you can you can always keep a look on this if there are any openings or if you know anyone uh, who who are at these banks and you want to get into any of these banks like definitely something that you should look out for and apart from that big four you know ey kpmg pwc delight also has their investment banking back which are doing fairly good in the indian market as well okay let's go to the uh, regional banks or brokers uh, domain so i mean i as its name suggests you know regional banks are generally uh, providing deals like you know are are helping the the a particular country right so now kotak has a very huge say in the indian market kotak icici securities uh, axis capital are have a have a very huge say when it comes to indian market because these those are the folks who are mo mostly book runners for all the ecm deals or um, like or m and a deal so so how does how do they differentiate from other banks is regional bank are like you know they also have their um, corporate banking or commercial banking retail banking in uh, in place at india and they generally have they generally have a very good relationship with the domestic players so like for example kotak might do might be doing a lot of buybacks in indian market because they already have relationship with with the with the company with the promoters and all that stuff so it's very important for you to understand how how the life of life at an regional bank is and how it differentiates from a bulge bracket because you you might get a lot of exposure into indian market but it's difficult that like you know you might have any cross border deal or anything like that and regional banks are like most most of the ecm deals which happen in india like you know ipos fpo are generally like you know lead book runners are 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 the folks you see on the screen you know like most of the times it's icici kotak ifl or these kind of banks who are the book runner for equity capital market deals ipos and fpos and and the last one is mid size ib firms um this this typically focus only on a particular region and uh, the 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 thing that they are trying to be you know lead boutiques but they are into a very early stage of their you know banking life so they are still considered as a mid size ib firm but like some of the some of the very very uh, well known names are nova druva ashika capital mk acuity cap acuity partners are some like something which you definitely should look out for and i'm sure like lot of folks uh, on this call want to get into investment banking it's it's 
I know a lot of people who are working with me who started from mid size IB firm, went up the ladder, went to regional banking, and then reached to the bulge packet. So it's like you're you're gonna the the trajectory might be different, but the end point can be the same at like for everyone. So like have a look at these banks. Uh, if you find there are uh, if you if you want to get into IB and you're not directly getting into like you know some bulge packet or boutique IB, this is not a this is the best place you can be, and you know that's after like a year, you can you know, all, all shift to the gears and you know come to the right place where you always had a dream to. Okay, uh, the fourth point of an uh, of our agenda is you know how 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 does uh, what what does the structure of an IB firm look like? A um, lot of folks like I'm sure you you people must have already heard about how what is front office, what is mid office, what is back office. Um, and how like all like most of these banks which are bulge bracket have their mid offices like have their front office mid office back offices all of them in india as well and that is like uh apart from like you know i, I don't think uh boutique banks or you know uh regional banks have this concept of mid office and back office because mid office and back office is something which when while you are in india you work for some other geography so it's it's different from uh from like it, it, it can't be possible for regional banks so so this structure is basically for the bulge bracket uh, you know uh, banks so you can see front office mid office back office in like to be honest front office uh, getting into front offices into a bulge bracket they generally have a team of say in india they generally have a team of say 10 people or 15 people but when you see their mid offices it can be like say 100 or 200 folks so that's that's a huge gap between um, the the number of hours that they put in at front office and the number of hours uh, at mid office or back office people put in. Uh, and again, as I mentioned, the departments are you know divided into equity capital markets, private equity advisor, date syndication, uh, mergers and acquisitions, private uh, and financial sponsor group. So so the way it is structured is you are soft aligned towards a particular department and a particular sector as well. So when, when I say soft align towards a particular department and sector, it can be that you are into ECM covering telecommunication market. So basically all the IPOs which are going to happen in the tech, te tech media and telecommunication will be covered by you. So that is how it is like the structure is designed. If you are into m and and say consumer group, so all the deals which, which are like, even if it's marketing, even if it's execution, uh, uh, you you are going to be part of that deal. Uh, so that is how you're soft aligned towards a particular department and sector. Um, and and most of these folks are sector agnostic in the sense that they, the team is so small that they cannot have uh, everyone into ev each of these sectors. So they, they work across the sectors. And that is how, how uh, a structure of an IB firm looks like. I'll take a pause here. I mean, I'm, if I'm going too fast, too slow, or if it's okay, you can just keep a, like, give a thumbs up so I can understand if we are at the same wavelength. Awesome. I can. I, I think I can see a few thumbs up. Cool. Let's let's move on to a uh, function of an IB firm. I think this was the first thing which I which I mentioned. Uh, in a layman language, you know, what is what is an IB firm or what does an IB firm do? So function of an IB firm here is, you know, they are generally divided into like two, two, two sides, buy side and sell side. How, what, like we, we have heard these terms so many times, but like, I, I'm not sure like everyone knows what exactly is a buy side firm or buy sell side firm, right? So buy side, most of the investment banking work that like, like, I guess 70% is generally buy side because there are a lot of folks who want to buy, but there are few folks <clears throat> who want to sell, right? So buy side firms are where we provide, we, we, are pro, we are bankers from a buyer who wants to buy a target. So for example, if, if Adani is planning to buy, like I'm, I'm sure you know, like in every, every week he's buying something or the other and has reached to the second richest man in the world. So like the m and team there is, insanely active so uh, so he wants to buy something then we'll be advisor to adani 
stating that okay these are the geographies you can invest into these are the industries you can invest into and these are the few targets which i think you can invest into so buy side is when we provide advisory to a buyer and sell side is basically say for example reliance says okay i think our petrochemical business is good off as a separate company so they'll spin off that segment and they want to sell their particular segment to some other banker or to some other strategic or private equity investor so we are an advisor from the sell side in the sense that we want to sell their business and we'll find potential buyers and the highest leverage or the best thing like what what an investment bank brings here is they have contacts like why 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 would any person go to an investment bank when they can directly buy from like from from the market it's it's because we have contacts and uh that is how we differentiate or that is what our x factor is that people don't directly go to the target and buy by the banks right you always need a middleman who will smooth in the process who will take care of all the um all the requirements of say all the stakeholders and uh, that is how like that is the x factor which an investment banking firm provides uh let's let's move on to the growth in an ib firm um how how does an growth look like or when do you think when you start from the bottom and when when do you when can you end at you know having a say for all the deals so analyst typically raises like uh, like you know have have a time frame of 0 to 3 years based on your performance um after second year you might get promoted to sr but the the average term or average perspective is like you know you stay from you stay as an analyst from 0 to 3 years then you move on to the ladder become associate uh, now associate there are two things when uh, when you when you complete your mba you can like in some regional banks or some uh, some banks you do you directly join at an asso- associate level but in all the bulge bracket or some of the elite boutique banks even after you have done your mba whatever you will still start from analyst level because um, that is what they they have been doing in india from like last 50 years so uh um, there are a few banks for example if you have done your mba from say im abcl or whatever um kotak might directly take you as an associate but even after doing it from im amdavad if you go to say morgan stanley jp morgan goldman sachs they'll 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 take you as an analyst because that is how they have structured uh, they are they are pipeline so uh, depends on what position you join in analyst is generally 3 years associate is also generally 3 years now avp and vp a lot of admin things also come onto your you know uh onto your plate you have to manage your team you have to also look into marketing aspects you also have to see if there are enough people there in the team you you might take interviews and all that so like 15 to 20% of your time also goes into admin stuff but again based on your performance from avp vp you can get to directors and again depending on your performance how many mark, how many deals you bring into the table how many deals you convert what are your contact you will become senior vp ed oblic md ed here is executive director md here is managing director so typically if you start an analyst level in in like say 12 years you can be managing director of a particular bank so that is like a time frame which you should look for and like i have seen fast track people go getting to the md level starting from analyst in say 9 to 10 years as well so it's it's highly dependent on your performance but after a point of time but like typically it is on on a average say 9 to 12 years okay now now very interesting thing you know everyone wants to get into ib but how do you apply right i mean like uh, i i think i'm co- like uh, can can someone tell me that i i'm sure you also have placement drives right after your degree yes we have okay so i mean as i mentioned the first thing is you can again obviously go to a placement drive uh, i'm not sure which all investment banks come but uh, i placement drives i'm sure some some investment bank might be coming so you can obviously apply there um, that is like the first place you can go to and and i i i personally think that lot of people actually get into an investment banking when they go through a referral instead of you know directly applying uh, via via their website because like on a daily basis they might be getting like 100 applications and if it is through a strong referral or someone who is already in the firm they might be more interested because the 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 person who is already in the firm has already vetted their cv and they know that okay he is good enough a candidate 
so like you know applying through strong personal reference is something which you can you know definitely uh try to get into for ib job cold messaging over linkedin i mean i think this is one of the uh like one of the things you might already be doing right you know just reach out to folks um and ask them okay if there is any opening um and they would be happy to you know like I, I, would they be okay if they can provide you a referral or not i mean on an on a daily basis like my, i i myself get like some 10 10 messages on linkedin saying stating that okay i am interested in doing investment banking um can you please provide me a referral so i think that is also like whenever i get time i look into all those messages i i, I try to help them and um get like see if i can be of any help of for getting them or landing them that job so cold messaging over linkedin is something which is uh i think which is already widely used and uh uh definitely something to look out for apply, apply after an mba i guess uh, i mean like you've already done your amcom so i'm not sure like uh, you are, you might still be willing to do an mba but like if if some like this was this was the, this ppt was generally made for folks who are doing ca or have, have done ca and are looking for uh, you know applying uh, applying to an ib directly from a ca degree so we told that okay maybe you can apply for an mba degree and then uh, move on towards applying to a ib job uh, as i mentioned like the first thing you know you can always take always start from a mid size ib firm move on to the uh, move on to the ladders you know from mid size to regional bank from regional bank to elite or and then bulge bracket however the uh, game starts but definitely something which you can look out for uh, i have seen a lot of folks who started into uh, big four in some other domain they got good references and they went to like uh, they they spoke to their partners stating that okay i am interested into valuations or i am interested into ib and the like one partner speaks to the investment banking partner stating that okay i have vetted this person he has been under me for like say 2 3 years and i think something like he is a good candidate and you should look out for him so that is what like when you start from some other domain you can always take a transfer to to the domain which you are interested in to build a good rapport and get get into the uh, role which you want uh, applying apply via job portals i i think linkedin is a great source for for that as well you know uh, most of the firms put up their job applications if you go to their uh, if you go to their page and you can see in the jobs you can see what are the kind of jobs there like that there are openings for you can apply from that um nokri.com or other other job portals are available in the market something which you can definitely look out for if you know there are a few head hunters who who would who are always looking for some or the other folks who want to join their investment banking so something like head hunters are something you should also look out for you know right placement agencies there are there are a few placement agencies who who provide who have, who have a direct tie up with uh, some investment banking firms and then they provide you assistance with Like, you know smoothing the process of applying to an investment bank uh, we we have, we have named here fast career but there are a lot of other you know i'm i'm sure a lot of folks have already heard about michael page michael page is a uh, is a is a placement agency which provides you uh, help to getting into private equity to getting into investment banking to getting into venture capital you can reach out to those folks asking them if there is anything which fits your uh, profile and uh, apply for a job via my them and there are some certain institution educational institutions which provide you a certification degree and after that i uh, had post that they also give you an assurity or like uh, always at least a placement drive which helps you to get into investment banking jobs and uh, obviously the main the main or the um, one of the key things which you can look out for you can always check the career portals of all these investment bank and check if there are any openings into your particular domain apply through that and at the same time also reach out to the same folks who are already in that role and ask them if they can refer as well so that's it's, it is like a two 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 uh <clears throat> like a double effect that you are applying from the website as well and also asking someone to you know uh, check if the if the opening is still available and if they can refer you so that is what how to apply for an ip job you know how how you can apply for investment banking jobs uh we again i i think most of the folks are waiting for this you know how how should we prepare for interviews right i mean investment banking interviews are 
are as difficult as you can you know make it so uh, investment banking interviews are something which i was also very scared of and thankfully i was able to crack that but you know, like generally the questions revolve around you know uh something starting from very basics you know what are the various valuation methodologies you might have to learn about like you know how how which valuation methodologies is preferred over other valuation methodologies like when 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 will you prefer say um dcf over relative valuation or where will where will you prefer intrinsic value or multiples approach or um there are, there are like you know you have to like portray them that okay you know all these valuation methodologies and you know when will you use a particular valuation methodologies and why so they might ask you all this in in your interviews um very important thing they, they they definitely test do you actively follow the the market right they'll ask you if you have seen any any recent deal happening in the market what what are your views on it they might ask you about say uh how 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 byju's has been acquiring or has been an acquiring spree but instead of that their market has been falling you know like that they 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 are not able to get get the profit which they are desired right? what are the reasons or any any recent amended deal which you have seen into any of the sector they might ask they they might ask you have you followed any deal because obviously they are bankers they know all the deals or they at least follow all the deals so they'll give you an option that okay if you if you know any deal and then then they'll grill you on that deal stating okay what was the multiple which happened for that deal so whenever you are preparing look for this recent transactions look what was the exact offering look when when the announcement happened and when the deal got closed what was the time what was the time frame required what were the various approvals required because a lot of times if it is a strategic investor we also have to see if the competition commission is okay if it is a listed company we also have to say if cb is okay you also have to have a you know uh, a bird's eye view on what happens from like you know announcement of deal to the closure of deal do do any of the bank who has provided provided underwriting back off or if they back off for why like what particular reason do they back off so they'll ask you all about this uh they'll ask you about ipos what was the premium at which they got listed why 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 did the startups who got listed in 2022 or 2021 like you know fell are are at like a 30% discount from the premium prices or from their listing prices um they'll ask you all about that then uh, a very interesting thing which i i was very surprised in my interview was um they ask you a lot about guesstimates brain teasers you know logical reasoning kind of questions as well so for example they'll ask you what is 26 into 33 right or say 27 into 33 right so you might be thinking okay 27 into 33 is not something that we can do like in in your in our mind without you know thinking but there is always a simpler way they just need to know that okay you know the structure so 26 into 33 will be 30 Plus three and thirty minus three, so that is how thirty square minus three square. So that the the answer will be that. So you they want to know that okay, if you know the correct way or correct approach, or are you a person who can who who will not fumble when they are tra- talking to a client, right? Because if if client says okay, maybe I this is what I need, and you'll be like okay, let me take up a calculator and check. It's not something which you would like to do in front of a client, right? So they would want to know that how how good are you at maths? How good are you at the logical reasoning uh, one of the interesting question which i got in my interview is you know if the watch is at 315 what is the angle between the minute hand and the hour hand you know our our first our first thought will be okay it's 315 right so it's at, it's at the 3 so it will be 0 degrees can can someone give it a shot okay when it's at 315 what will be the angle between the minute hand and the hour hand anyone uh 45 45 degrees yeah uh, what is the rational behind it sorry what is the rational behind it uh i just thought like uh, because it's at 315 so that's why Yeah, it's at three fifteen. So the the both the minute hand and R and the R hand should be at three, right? So how how come forty five? Forty five will be like a lot of degrees. Like you know, the the difference will be very high. 
Alisha is saying less than five degrees. Anyone, any, anyone who wanna give it a shot, or just if you are okay, you can just type it out. Suchita Rati, three sixty degrees. Okay. Anyone else? Parth, five degrees. Okay. Anshul, one eighty degrees. Okay, so I'll just give it a, you know, like six degrees, Dhananjay. Okay. Um, just imagine the watch is at 315, right? So what, what do you see? 315, like the minute hand is exactly at three and the hour hand might be slightly lower than three because in 60 minutes, it has to go from three to four, right? So in 60 minutes, if it has to go from three to four and in 12 hours, it has to complete an entire circle. So in, in 12 hours, it has to do 360 degrees, correct? In, in 12 hours, 360 degrees, in one hour, 30 degrees. So in 60 minutes, if it has to do 30 degrees, in 15 minutes, it will do seven and a half degrees. It is half of the time. So the answer is seven and a half degrees. When you see at 315, the hour hand is slightly below three and the minute hand is exactly at three. So the angle between the minute hand and the hour hand will be seven and a half degrees. Now, when I say 630, so 630, the minute hand will exactly be at six and the hour hand will be slightly uh, like, you know, ahead of six in middle of six and seven because it's 630. So when it is at 630, the angle between the minute hand and the hour hand will be 15 degrees. Well, similarly, when it is at 945, it will be 45 degrees divided 45 minutes divided by two, which will be 22 and a half degrees. So this is how you like, you know, um, at first instance, when like, I, I obviously thought, okay, it is, it will not be zero degrees. So I did not tell zero degree. I, I gave it a, uh, 10 seconds thought. And then I, I, I visualized what will be a watch like, and in a minute I had to answer. So I, thankfully I was I able to think at that particular point of time, but yeah, I mean, these kind of guesstimates are something which you can expect into when, when you are giving an interview. Um, the, the, the fourth point will be obviously financial domain news. What is happening in the market? How is inflation or interest rate affecting um, all, or affecting the, uh, the equity market? What are the gold rate, gold rate or how, how a gold rate is related to a, uh, equity market rates. So something you should definitely have into, uh, I think, on and like whatever what whatever you plan to do but at least you should give 30 minutes each day to read uh, financial news because we all are into this financial uh, the, this this particular uh, industry i i think like whatever you want to become whatever you aspire to become give 30 minutes each day to read news uh, or if you're not okay with physical news you can just download any app look like you know quickly glance through what is happening into the market and I think that will be more than enough when you are preparing or when you are near to your placement rise. Um, uh, the, the next point being, you know, macroeconomic parameters. Um, I mean, in my interview, they also asked what is the reverse repo rate? What is the repo rate and all that kind of stuff. If you know all that stuff, um, it's, 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 it's recommended that you, uh, you prepare for it. You see what is the repo rate going on in the market? How it, how is it, you know, uh, impacting my uh my deals flow or anything so it's very it's very important to have keep a track on all these microeconomic factors um and this is one of the common question which they you know ask uh, if you like do you invest in stock market and if you invest why do you invest obviously you can't tell them okay like you know mere bhaiya ke chacha ne bola ki ye stock acha hai to utha lo it's not an investment it's not an answer they are looking for from an investment banking analyst right so they'll, they'll, if you follow any, if you, if you invest in stock market, how, how would you like, what is the, what is the rational because behind of it? You know, if you can provide rational for that, then it's, it's more than okay. If you, if you can't, then they'll ask you like, you know, what, like you can't just go on the basis of someone else's, um, like, you know, guidance or anything, right? Because that is not what an investment banking analyst would do. So. Uh, whenever you are preparing for interviews, like if you're, if you have already invested into stock, stock market, read their financials, read what is their debt equity ratio, read what, what have they done recently? Um, what, what, what are, what are the changes in the management? Check, check throughout, 
uh, i was i was asked to calculate their back you know weighted average cost of capital uh, of of a company which i invested into and they were like Ki, can you remove their back you know? and um, thankfully like uh, two days prior i got their you know uh, annual report and i i just glanced through and i was able to recall what were their date range numbers equity numbers and that is how you know it helped me to calculate their back so it's it's important that when you are investing when you tell that you invest they'll ask you what what you invest like in which company you have invested and what is what what all are the factors that you have keeping a track on right so you should definitely uh, prepare a few companies uh, go go through their financials in in detail and understand how their debt equity ratio looks like and everything and um, any recent transaction oblig activity you know run through their three financial statements you know balance sheet um, income statement and cash flow um, it's a very common question uh, which i have like i have seen a lot of folks getting asked this how will my if my def depreciation is changed by rupees 45 how will it impact all the three financial statements so then you have to uh, think about okay if my balance sheet like if my depreciation is changing my pnl will be you know increased by rupees 45 my there will be no change in cash flow because depreciation is a non cash item how will my balance sheet uh, impact and then you at the end you have to match your balance sheet by stating okay balance sheet, my my uh, my my asset to price is going to be going to fall by 45 and at the same point my reserves are going to fall by 45 because it is impacting my profit and loss and that is why my balance sheet total will be minus 45 at each side or like no Fall fell by rupees forty five, in both the sides, and my balance sheet is tallying. So yeah, <coughs> so that was about how to prepare for interviews. Uh, you can also you know check check out our website. We we have a lot of free uh, resources also provided uh, at our website about all these investment banking books or um, some videos relating to it. Everything you can just scan it or you can just take a snip whenever you want to. You can uh, hop onto our website and check out. um what are the different kind of services we provide um and yep that's that's about it from me i'll be happy to take any questions if you have uh students who have questions please switch on your videos and uh, ask the questions to sir sir would be really happy to help you out with the answers Thank you, Abhijit, uh, for such a great insights. I'm sure this has added great value to the students. So let's begin with uh, question and answers. So are the working timings as bad as various people, uh, like on YouTube's and podcasts, say about investment banking? <laughs> okay, now <laughs> I think I think Mehak would be a good person to answer this because I have been uh, replying her at a very uh, odd timing. Yeah, like you know, I mean, I have, I've, I've been, I, I, I don't think it's, it's something which uh, is sugar coated, but it's a, it's a fact that everyone knows in the investment banking industry that if you want to be in that industry, because see, I mean, I'll tell you, it's a very niche industry. There are, there are very few folks who are at, at, at those in, in, in this industry. As, as when you compare to say the, the, the consulting domain, you see, you'll see that there are a lot of people who are consultants. but when you see uh, investment banking the ratio will be 1 to 10 so if there are like 10 bankers there will be 100 consultants so uh, the the amount of work that these banks have are, is insane because they do a lot of marketing stuff um, there there are a lot of mandates which they already have but they always have a crunch on their capacity or crunch on their resources they want to want to make their existing resources work more and pay them even more by you know by in the way of bonuses so i think uh, the working hours are um, very team specific but on an average you should like you know assume like like 14 15 hours a day at least um, but like in in good, good uh, when when uh, there is a lot of flow of deals but when if it's when there is no flow then you will still do some marketing and it can be like say 7 8 hours but i don't think um, that's that's like you know that is or any any time a case because you always have some deal so assume like 14 15 hours a day uh, to be like good enough thank you abhishek hello sir yes sir hello 
Uh, I want to ask uh, why uh, big companies like Zomato, Paytm, uh, uh, Paytm's IPO are failed in market. See, uh, to be to answer it in one simple word is they're they're overvalued. Uh, it's it's not about why they're failing. It's about the valuation methodologies which a particular valuation expert used is not in line with what the public thinks about their valuations. So all these startup, there was a startup bubble which bursted and all the startups fell because like they were not into profits. I think the only unicorn or only uh, the startup, only startup which is profitable in which happened in the last two years is uh, you know, zero. Da. Apart from that, everyone is at a negative rate. Even Nike uh, is, is still not able to make profits, right? So, so the the expectation which a valuation expert built, okay, maybe say like they use say 15 years um, model stating that, okay, in 15 years, the cash flow will be this much. And then when they discounted that cash flow, it came to a certain level. It is not in line with what the public at large thinks about their valuation. And that is why all these, you know, stock prices have crashed or plunged, um, stating the overall scenario of having a you know startup bubble. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, BG. Puru this side. Hey, so, Puru. how is your corporate life at JP and Chase? Sorry, uh, I, I think your 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 voice was breaking. Can you can you come again? Okay. Yeah. So, how is your corporate life at JP Morgan and Chase? I think uh, JP Morgan has a very great culture and very you know, uh, uh, very good at you know uh, keeping their employees happy by you know at least giving the weekends off and everything. So I think I am like the corporate life at JP Morgan is really good as compared to like some other bulge brackets uh, where where they are you know like pulled to uh, work on weekends as well. I mean if it I if I was working on weekend I wouldn't have been able to join this call right. So it's, it's very good. I think uh, the culture is really good. The deal flow is good. Uh, at the end, I think all it matters is if you are satisfied, it's, it's, it's all that matters. But I mean, corporate life and I, I like along with, along with that, I was able to also um, do some work on my startup and I'm also like uh, into content creation and all that stuff. So I, I, I think um, if it was like, if the life was not good, I, I don't think I would have been able to uh, manage all these things. So. It was it was really good uh, to like you know the, co the, co the corporate life is really good at JP Thank you. Yeah. Hi Abhijit, it's Jeeva here. Uh, I just wanted to ask uh, for somebody who is switching careers, say let's say from tax or accounts or any other field, or is an absolute beginner. What are the skills that he should he or she should acquire to get into investment banking? Okay, I will. I like. I mean. Uh, I think the most most important thing that we need to understand is uh, whenever you're applying as a fresher, they'll take you as a fresher and they'll provide you all the trainings. But the most important thing to get an interview call is having that CV. I, I I don't think we give that much importance to CV as we are we should give uh, the like you no know, the 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 weightage that a CV has is very high. Um, and to portray that you have the relevant skills, you have to show it in your CV, right? I mean, like there will be thousands of folks who are going to apply, but there will be only say 10, 15 who are going to get interview calls, right? So the most important thing that you, you should understand is you should spend good amount of time on your CV because it's the biggest filter. You should, you should be able to portray in your CV that you have the relevant skills because see getting getting a get showing them that you have skills will be only at the interview stage but getting to the interview stage is very important when you have to show them that okay i have the relevant skills i have spent some time on on this financial industry i know what it is so please at least consider me right so i i don't think i can give enough importance um like what how important a cv is um and it's something which like a lot of folks think that, okay, Mera CV is very good. I can get an interview call, but you have to see in the market, there are a thousand more folks there. You have to have that X factor. You have to spend more time on your CV and then only uh, you might get an interview call because like most of these, you know, Fortune 500 have ATS, which is an application tracking system. So because they get so many CVs, like most of the CVs don't even go to an human before they're rejected, right? They just 
go through an application tracking system they see what is the score in your application tracking system and they reject directly that is how it works so it's very important to have a strong cv and when it comes to having a domain specific skills i think you know um financial modeling and investment having having knowledge of valuation various valuation methodologies financial modeling is very important or is something that you can portray which can give you that edge over and above others so these skills are something which you should definitely learn on um also i mean most of the times we are on excel or ppt so it's very important that you know all the shortcuts uh to save you know like so that you can have your sleep at am like have your sleep at pm rather than am because um if you don't know how how to work on excel that your 9 pm can end up being 4 am so it's very important that you have that skill in you thank you yep hello yeah hello uh, so my question was so supposing if you have a uh, analyst job at a big four and uh, if you are getting a, a call from say a smaller company but that's for a role of associate but the ctc would be higher but do you recommend to shift at a smaller company that See, I, mean, i i think i think i think the call here is going to be uh, where do you want to see yourself in say like 5 years right if i was given an option to join some other firm at an associate level uh, after end of my one year i would have given it a thought that where do i see myself after 5 years so so the thing is that if you want to grow into ib industry and if your end end is uh, to getting into pe or vc it's always good to not you know uh, dilute your brand because brand value also has a lot of lot of you know say when you when you when you get a cv shortlist or when you get an interview call so uh, when you are taking a call it, it 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 never should be only on the basis of ctc but it should also be on the basis of brand and uh, like the work which you are going to do and the exit opportunities after after that you know after you take that job right so um, i guess ctc can be a part of it but i mean i i at this age i don't think ctc should matter a lot uh, instead of you know having the having a say in what what you see yourself in like, like next 5 years or where do you see the exit opportunities after in that company okay thank you so much cool cool hello sir hey hi yeah hello sir. thank you for the great session and uh, i have a question that i am currently working as a financial analyst in cri department uh, but uh, i want to switch as a investment banking analyst so is there any department which deals in cri and uh, how is it easy or uh, difficult is to change your domain in the uh, same industry uh sorry sorry i was not able to follow your question can you can you tell me which company you are referring to or what, what you are referring to? i am working as a uh, financial analyst as a okay. in commercial real estate department okay, okay commercial real estate yeah and my main work is to fill the sheets in excel so okay. my question is that i want to work as a investment banking analyst and okay. is there any department in cri in investment banking commercial real estate okay and second question is that how it is easy or difficult to change your domain in the uh, investment banking and in the finance industry see i mean like i'll i'll take your second question first because um i think it's very like i very important to clarify this that i i guess the average age here i mean like of all of us is going to be say 22 to 26 uh, or 21 to 26 right and we are at a very early stage of our career and um switching switching jobs or switching industry is not something that we should be very worried about i mean there are, i know a lot of folks who who work say 5 years into investment banking they they figured that okay investment banking is not sustainable for me they went into um say into a corporate job or say into consulting so i don't think you know it's um it's that difficult to change gears or that difficult to change industries as like i have a simple mantra which says that are you satisfied with what you do if you are satisfied then it's more than good if you're not then i don't think so you are at the right place right so so for like very important to think in a way that you take like, i like if i was given a chance 
okay do you have to start from scratch zero into some other industry i would give definitely you know have a glitch stating that maybe yeah i mean my peers are already like two levels ahead of me or like you know i had in my i had in the experience which i am going to enter but i would give it a thought in a way that i am not happy with what i am doing or this is not my cup of tea so i don't think so shifting industries is something um, at this age we should be worried about um, when it comes to uh, you know a uh, change of domain completely and when it comes to commercial real estate um uh, see i as i mentioned like all of like the structure of an ib firm has real estate as a separate you know separate or uh, department in their uh, in their structure so you can definitely try out of getting for, for getting into real estate but I, i i think you might be having a experience of say one or two year that like that does not make you an expert in that industry as of now right so uh you're not like in inevitable and like something someone who is not replaceable right so when you when you how 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 are you going to pitch them to uh like to hire you instead of some other fresher right that is that is something which which will make you stand out um stating that you already have some knowledge of real estate no, uh, industry and uh, you are a good fit for um and that is how i think you know you should look look uh, into switching from like your financial analyst domain to investment banking role okay sir thank you for the guidance thanks sir hello hello yeah hello sir yeah yeah bhavesh go on uh pravesh is your voice is cracking can you just check or oh, just do one thing you can put your questions down in the uh, chat box and that's fine chat box or feedback form that be great Uh, can can someone read out the questions from chat box because i i might have missed a few so if someone can you know volunteer and read out then i'll answer the one question that came in the chat box was do investment banks hire undergraduates yeah yeah they do they do they definitely do uh so uh there are a lot of engineering folks also into investment banking industry and like uh i i i i i know a lot of people in my team who are from uh undergraduate who have done bcom uh and they are into investment banking industry so uh, undergrads are something i think i think the important question here is from which which college but like they are very selective into that but uh, they do hire from undergraduate colleges or under uh, as an undergrad degree so so good morning sir yeah yeah hi good morning anshul so uh, so i am audible correct na yeah yeah so my i am having two questions firstly first question like uh, i am an acci aspirant so would like uh, investment banking profile like it would be how important uh, would it uh, like be after after i complete my acci journey like if i want to be a part of investment banking uh i mean see i have i have not seen some like a uh, lot of people who are having acci degree uh getting into like ib because uh, they they need good financial knowledge i think you can you can um, have a cfa degree along with it or if you are planning to do mba that that might really help you but again as i mentioned there are there are exceptions everywhere so if you have good referrals if you can portray that you have in the financial knowledge you can definitely get into investment banking and um one of the thing you should do it like you should not you know have your vision that okay i want to get into this particular bank only you can start from mid like you know uh, mid size ib firm then then you can as i mentioned you know after a point of time it's not about what degree you have it's about what experience you have so if you can uh, develop that experience at some mid size bank you can grow into that ladder and get into the uh, company which you want so another thing is you can also correspond your acca degree with cfa degree uh which might give you a weightage of having a financial knowledge as, as well uh okay so okay so so uh like if i don't like uh my plans are to do mba only like after acca but uh, okay. it's like the, the degree like i just want to hold for some security purpose like rather i am having interest in investment or like investment banking more so like oh, would you like means you can just like recommend means is it good like i can go for it or not like as you said ki you uh, like you didn't saw many accs uh, graduates like uh, they are like 
choosing this path but like i am choosing like because i have interest in it so what would you like just uh, recommend me or what would you guide me for this see i mean it's not that uh, investment banking is the end of the end of the life right i mean there are so many options that you can definitely go and ac if if acc is something that you like and i mean i am i am a firm believer of a, of a, of a, of a mentor, like no if i am satisfied then i don't i it doesn't matter what other people think about it i mean i mean if you are if you if you really enjoy studying acca so i don't think there is any you know harm in doing that or uh, any down downside into doing that right and uh, eventually you will get into investor banking maybe your peers will get like say next year or next year next year you will be into investment banking or whichever domain which you want in in a in a delayed point point of time but everyone will get into it if they are firm believer of like you know they are enjoying the process you know enjoying the process is very important so if you are happy with what you are doing if you if you really enjoy doing acc then why not i mean i don't think it's a good good thing to you know uh switch based on on like you no know, that's no uh end to it so i think it's definitely see i i would not say i have not known a lot of acc i would say that i don't have knowledge about like you no know, exit opportunities after acc so i mean i don't think i i tick that box of um, answering what are the exit opportunities after acc so but i i definitely think if you are if you are happy with if you if you really enjoy what you are studying then definitely why not so so, so currently last... yeah go ahead yeah can i go ahead like i have yeah sure sure go ahead okay so so like basically currently like i am in my like i'm just uh, i'm like graduate i am an undergraduate student uh, so would you recommend like should i start working in for investment banking while studying for acca like both the together right now or should i like wait see uh, having a internship will always help your uh, cv be strong right so in uh, it's difficult to manage like to get a uh, a full time role at the very beginning uh, only on the basis of undergrad degree so i would definitely recommend you to keep on scouting uh, until and and like you know it can always be a positive thing or it will always have weight when you write it on your cv that okay you did like three months internship whatever like two months six months whatever it time amount whatever tenure of your internship at some investment bank because you have relevant experience having that relevant experience is also very important so definitely uh, something which you should look for but again very important when you are entering into investment banking you won't like have a lot of time to study so you should have you should take a call whether you want to complete your degree first and then enter or like you do do both of them simultaneously so it's a it's a personal call okay sir and so what would be success to any career like like what would you say on this i mean success i i i i see success as whether i am able to sleep say you know peacefully when i go to my bed in the night i i don't consider success as you know having a benchmark of having like you know multi million dollars in my account or anything i it's at the end i am i mean you you may call me old school yeah, but but at the end i am like i am am i satisfied with what i do and am am i making a impact or am i making a difference to someone someone's life or you know into the market or whatever and that is what success is to me okay sir so sir do you think some time does age matters like for like if we didn't get something what we want to achieve at a right time i i don't think so i mean if you are persistent per persistent enough then you will definitely get into it um, maybe like at a delayed point of life but i i don't think that may it's, it's a great barrier or age is a barrier when it comes to uh, you know i mean i i know people who are like say like elder to me but who are still like you know under me so it's it's not like uh, under me in the sense uh, in the uh, designation level so it's i don't think it's it's uh, it's a barrier as such it's you might get a delayed uh, entry but you will get an entry if you are persistent enough having that persistence is very important yes. 
I am going to interrupt right here. But I guess we are getting a lot of questions from the chat box, but our principal ma'am is here. So I guess we have to stop the Q&A for right now. We'll answer all more questions. Abhijit might answer. If we will have a feedback form and we'll try to answer as many questions as possible. But right now, I'd like the principal ma'am to just speak a few words. Thank you, sir. And thank you, Jeeva. I am done with my questions. Then on. Uh, good morning to one and all, and uh, especially to this new team uh, that has come up in HR College, which is uh, an MCOM committee. Now, I would call this as a committee of seniors in HR College. Why? Because they are the postgraduate students. They have actually chosen their careers. They are very sure about it, and now they are just on to the last few uh, stages of their uh, career finishing degrees and entering into job profiles. And today when I was listening to Abhijit ji, I mean, uh, welcome to HR virtually, first of all. Uh, we would have liked to see you offline in college premises and also uh, seeing you, meeting you personally and you would see HR college because uh, this is one of the best college and uh, thank you Abhijit uh, taking time out on uh, a weekend which might be your holiday and uh, uh, giving time out to these uh, young budding brand ambassadors of HR college and giving them ideas about uh, investment banking and otherwise also when someone asked you what if we don't get anything at right time. And you could beautifully answer that there is no right time. It is only you have to check what you are getting and be satisfied and move on awesome. because life, nobody knows. And uh, I'm, I'm proud to say, I must give credit to uh, the two people out here. One uh, is Professor Dharti Narvani, who a young <laughs> professor of ours is taking this team of MCOM students and making this team of MCOM committee. I think this is the first time that any college would have an MCOM committee in college, any college. And I must also thank uh, and appreciate the efforts of our vice principal, Dr. Jasbi Sodhi, who is also MCOM coordinator. I think when they have mentors like these who are willing to give the best to the students, even if it is online, I mean, it's amazing. And I must thank entire committee of brand ambassadors. I met them and they already are in corporate culture. They are planning such big events when you speak to them. And I think people like Abhijit and many other stalwarts who are joining in as masterclass professors, they will only open up a plethora of platforms for these students. And we never know that tomorrow, and, and it's our dream that out of the ones who are sitting here, one person or two persons, and in fact, all will take master classes in the near future. And uh, we pray that our students get the best. And this is what the beauty of HR College is, that we don't rely on only what is in the book, but we interact or make students or brand ambassadors interact with industry and tell them, look, the world is not what is written in a book world is completely different. Accept it, adapt to it, and grow. And this is what MCOM committee of our college is doing. And thank you to the entire core team, Professor Dharti, Professor Jasbir, and especially my dear Abhijit, because the one who speaks and gives uh, guidance is always a guru. And today, by default, you have become a guru of HR college. And we are proud to get associated with Abhijit on investment banking and many more opportunities that you will give to our students. So thank you so much, Abhijit, and the entire core team of my brand ambassadors who could have easily sat today and Saturday and watched Brahmastra, which is a movie people are banning on Saturday weekends or sit on Netflix and enjoy movies. But today they have taken their time out and are learning fundas of investment banking and how to demystify this. I think this is what our commitment of our students is. So wishing a success to the entire MCOM committee because this is a grand opening of committee
today with your lecture, Abhijit. So you are the pioneer of this committee today. And, you know, the first one is always the uh, special one and close to the heart. So Abhijit, thank you for joining us and giving us opportunity and would request. Um, I don't know which college you did your graduation and your master's. But I want a promise from you because we always take it from our experts that whenever you get an opportunity to hire, please hire HRIs. Don't Definitely. record this. Don't record <laughs> this. But this is a secret uh, that we always request our industry experts because we have those children, uh, those intelligent uh, group in college. We only want a hand who can support them into industry. And Abhijit, we request you to give them uh, these MCOM students and PG students, the opportunities that your industry has for these kids. So thanking you once again and wishing this MCOM committee, my dear brand ambassadors, very, very, very successful year. That is 22-23. And may you get very good jobs after listening to these stalwarts like Abhijit in HR College. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. I mean, I, I did my graduation from Pune. So, I mean, I've always heard a lot about uh, HR College and I have a lot of friends who did their graduation from HR College. So, it's, it's always very close to my heart as well. And I would definitely love to, you know, meet all of us, meet all of you in person as well. Like, if, if whenever the college reopens and you have any other plans of, you know, having such a uh, webinar, I would, be, I would be more than happy to... No, come there in person as well. And and I'm I'm basically from Mumbai now because like my job requires me to be in Mumbai. So yeah, I mean I would love to have you know be in person as well. And thanks, thanks a lot, ma'am, for your words. Do visit HR, not just for lecture, but anytime the college is open. Principal normally sits, students sit at home. So I'm there. Uh, the vice principals are there, the faculties are there. We will love to meet you and uh, host uh, lunch for you. We'll be very, very happy to meet you in person in HR College, Abhijit. And yes, all the brand ambassadors, for sure. Yes, yes. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Thank you very much, ma'am, for uh, the invitation. And uh, to the Abhijit, uh, it was really a very good learning experience, even though uh, I was working, but then I was still listening to each and every word of yours. And it's it's highly appreciated and you are always welcome anytime any saturday anytime you are free, please please come down to the hr college we will have lunch together definitely definitely i think i will i'll definitely uh make a make it in a in my plan uh diary and i would definitely come there and uh, love to meet you all in person as well I mean, uh, teaching is something that's very close to me because my mom has been a teacher for the last 25 years. Uh, and she was also my class teacher when I was in 10th standard. So I have a very high respect for all the teachers. And uh, I mean, it's very close to me as well. And uh, yeah, definitely something to look forward for. Anytime. Uh, hi, thank you. I would like to just uh, just thank Vijit. Thank you so, so much for taking up your really precious, valuable time and for giving us such amazing insights. I'm pretty sure today we learned something about the real life world a little bit more. I would also like to thank our principal ma'am, Jasbir ma'am and Dharti ma'am for making this uh, meeting a possibility. And I, want, I would also like to thank all the people who have attended today and asked questions. Thank you all for spending time with us and uh, listening to him speak. We have a feedback form that we are setting in the chat. So do please uh, fill up the feedback form and let us know what you think about the sessions. And also do follow him on Instagram. He has a channel called as Metaverse, right? Mentors. Yeah. Mentors. Sorry, my bad. Mentors, please do follow him. They give out amazing advice over there. And thank you. That's it, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Also, also, I am I am always reachable on LinkedIn. If you have any questions or 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 on email, you can just email me or you know drop me a text on LinkedIn. I would be happy. I mean, I am I am not sure if I was able to answer all of them, but definitely would love to give your uh, give you answers uh, on on anything. Uh, I'll just I'll just uh, drop my in uh, LinkedIn ID here. So like, it's 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 by Abhijit Mutha only. So you can just reach out to me there as well. Thank you very much.
Awesome. Have a have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.